now that we have our expression or fundamental relationship that describes the kinematics around bars under torsional loads, let's go ahead and look at the issue of the equilibrium equation. So let me go ahead and consider a bar. It's going to be round. Actually, it doesn't matter right now, but uh, we'll go ahead and assume it's round. And it'll be subjected to a distributed t body torque, this little t of z. So that's force times length, torque per unit length. So the units of little t are actually force. And maybe it's subjected to, say, an end torque uh, TL. So that's, again, units of force times length. And maybe it's supported in one end. But, uh, and let's go ahead and, and consider equilibrium in the system. So let me go ahead and cut out, make a free body diagram of a little section of the bar. So I'll take a section of the bar of length delta Z and make a free body diagram of it. And so this little chunk of material is going to be subjected to a number of loads. First of all, there's going to be an internal torque T of Z acting on the left face. On the right face, there'll be an internal torque T of Z plus delta Z. And then there's also the distributed torque little t. And so the total torque associated with the distributed torque is going to be the integral of little t of Z from Z to Z plus delta Z. So that's my complete free body diagram. And so you can see that there's no forces acting on the system directly, no resultant forces. And there's only torques about the Z axis. So. I can go ahead and sum the torques about the z-axis. I'll have t of z plus delta z minus t of z plus this integral of little t from z to z plus delta z. So that's my equilibrium equation. And now we can play the sort of usual game that we've been doing so far. Is So let me go ahead and divide through by delta z and then take the limit as delta z goes to 0. So the first term is going to become the derivative. And the second term actually turns out to be t or little t in this case. So my equilibrium equation then becomes dt dz, so capital T, plus little t equals 0. So that's the equilibrium equation for a bar under torsion. And it basically occupies the same place in the theory as dr dx plus little b equals 0 does for axial forces. So you'll notice the great degree of similarity between those two relationships. Now, when we did looked at the axial force problem, we also had a relationship between the internal force, capital R, and the stresses on the cross-section. So let's go ahead and get that relationship also for the torque in this case. So let me go ahead and consider bar, and I'm going to slice it at some elevation z, and let me go ahead and look at that surface. So on that surface, there's a resultant torque or moment of capital T uh, at position z. And that resultant torque is related to the stresses that are acting on the cross section. So let me go ahead and look at a little bit of area here on the cross section. And if I look at that little bit of area, there are going to be stresses. And there's three possible stresses on this surface, sigma zz, sigma zr, and sigma z theta. And if I multiply by the area of the little piece of material I'm looking at, let's call it dA, then I'll actually have the forces. So there's a force in the z direction. There's one in the radial direction, that's the sigma z r dA. And there's one in the theta direction, or the hoop direction, sigma z theta dA. So remember, the first subscript, subscript indicates the normal to the surface. So the normal to my surface here is EZ. And the second subscript on the stresses gives us the force directions. So now, if I look at this picture, the only force that's going to contribute to torques or moments about the z-axis is going to be sigma z theta dA. And that's the force. The lever arm is little r. And so if I take little r times sigma z theta dA, that gives me the torque that's about the z-axis from this little bit of material. And then I need to add it up for every little bit of material on the cross-section, which means I simply has to have to integrate over the cross-section. So I end up with this integral over the cross-sectional area of r times sigma z theta times dA. And that gives me the resultant moment, or the z component of the resultant moment, relative to the center of the bar at this given elevation z. So that gives me my final relationship that connects the torque to the stresses. And dA, uh, since we're doing things kind of in the polar sense, is going to be r dr d theta. And this is the counterpart to the relationship that says that the internal force is equal to the integral of the stresses sigma xx dA that we had for the case of axial forces.